All right, moving on to our second inductee for the class of 2023. Now, we always marvel at student athletes that excel and varsity letter in two different sports. Well, how about this next inductee, who's not only a two-sport official, he excelled both in both and earned national recognition for his tremendous contributions. Ladies and gentlemen, here's our next inductee. Let's meet Dr. Lloyd Hisaka. Whoever created the saying, nice guys finish last, clearly hasn't met Dr. Lloyd Hisaka. A graduate of Honoka'a High, Oregon State, and East Texas State University, Lloyd Hisaka started officiating a wide variety of sports while in the Army, volunteering for Little League and inter-squad basketball games. His true passion of officiating kicked into high gear while at the University of Hawaii. It was uh, kind of a funny deal. Uh, when I was hired at the University of Hawaii as a director, uh, Ed Chewy was the chairman and he hired Lloyd uh, as my assistant, and I had no say in that. And it was one of the nicest things that ever happened to me. Lloyd and I hit it off and been very close friends for years. I, if I'd have gone out to hire somebody, I couldn't have got anybody better. I met Lloyd while I was going to the University of Hawaii. Uh, the, and he was the uh, assistant intramural director, and he gave me actually my first paid job officiating basketball. Uh, it was for $6 a game, and we worked four games, and you actually got paid for five. While attending graduate school in Texas, he began officiating both football and basketball. That jump-started a 36-year high school and 25-year NCAA career. Among his accomplishments, he officiated the Rainbow Classic, the Maui Invitational, and multiple HHSAA championships, all the while coaching college students at UH the basics of officiating. He's always been giving me advice, you know, throughout the years that I've known him. Uh, and he's uh, someone that doesn't uh, always give advice unless asked, you know, so he's not, he's not one to try and push his uh, way of thinking or his theories, you know, on someone else unless, you know, he's, he's asked of his, for his help. He's someone that really um, keeps his composure all the time and is pretty even keel, you know both on and off the field, on and off the court. I don't know if there's anybody in the state of Hawaii who's more about officiating than Lloyd Hisaka over a wide range of them. Now, there may be people who know more about a sport, but I doubt if there's very many that know more about a whole bunch of sports. Name a sport and chances are Lloyd's done it. In 1975, his football career blossomed after joining the OI Football Officials Association, working prep bowls, HHSA title games, and even the Hula Bowl. In 1999, he was honored as NFHS State of Hawaii Football Official of the Year, and 11 years later, was selected as the sideline assistant for replay for Mountain West Conference football games played in Hawaii, a role he holds to this day. Regardless of the job or the sport, Lloyd Hisaka displays the highest level of professionalism, humility, and care, traits that make Lloyd lovable. I don't think I ever had a bad uh, word with Lloyd. As a matter of fact, one of the problems I had with Lloyd was he would always come to me to kind of ask permission. And I said, hey, do you run in this program? Said, Go do it, you know? But he was, he was very detrimental to me as being the director uh, when he didn't really have to be. I was very happy, very deserving. Um, he, he's just one nice human being, you know, he, he's someone that uh, I've known for, you know, almost close to 50 years and I've never heard anyone had any ill things to say about him at any time. The love and respect for him isn't surprising. What is, though, is Lloyd's longevity. To this day, he volunteers his time as a rules official for the Hawaii State Golf Association, an observer and evaluator for high school basketball and football games, and there appears to be no sign of slowing down. I'm kind of wondering about his mentality. <laughs> uh, it's just something he likes to do, and he's the kind of people that gets along well with people, and he's just a natural at, at doing that kind of stuff. I think one of his biggest contributions to both football and basketball is his um, rules knowledge, rules interpreter. Uh, he's a cl great clinician. You know, he works at officiating camp. He's very good at teaching officials, you know, the right way of doing things. I think that's probably one of the things that he does best. In 2002, he was awarded the NFHS Citation Award, the highest award given by the NFHS. Good old Loi Hisaka just continues to shine 
adding to a legacy that will last a long time. For the most part, you know, a, a, a very, very good official, basketball and football, but more so, you know, off the field, again, as an administrator, uh, clinician, trainer, uh, rules interpreter, I think that, that part is something that uh, his legacy will live on for a long time. I think the main thing is that if you know Lloyd, he's soccer, you, you know a pretty nice human being. Congratulations to 2023 Hawaii Sports Officials Hall of Fame inductee, Dr. Lloyd Hisaka. The doc is in. Congratulations to our newest inductee into the 2023 Hawaii Sports Officials Hall of Fame, Dr. Lloyd Hisaka. Uh, I just want to mention that uh, I paid Doc a lot of money for that, uh, those comments. <laughs> I've known uh, Doc and uh, Brian, who uh, also made the presentation for a long time, for you know, over 50 years. And then right now, Brian and I are pretty much uh, weekly golfing partners. Uh, I'm not foolish enough to think that uh, you know, I did all this stuff by myself. There were so many people in my life that uh, assisted me uh, along the way as an intramural official, and excuse me, as an athletic official and an intramural sports director. I'd like to, on table three, I'd like to introduce uh, my wife uh, and my daughter, Haley. Uh, they allowed me to do the things that uh, Around, with officiating that uh, were important to me. I know they weren't always uh, happy with the whole uh, officiating deal, but uh, you know, I, I, they, they bit the bullet and uh, allowed me to do whatever I wanted as far as officiating was concerned. Uh, Dr. Martin was uh, my boss for over 40 years at the University of Hawaii, and he gave me the opportunity to uh, do what I wanted to do. Whenever there was uh, limited funds and we both couldn't go to a national meeting or to an official's clinic, you know, he would always send me to the clinic. And uh, I owe a lot to him because he, uh, uh, we spent 40 years together. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce uh, a former student of mine, a, a, a graduate student that worked for us, and currently, uh, the Director of uh, Student Recreation Services at the University of Hawaii, Dr. Gary Boxa and his wife, Erin. Uh, thanks a lot. I have uh, a brother and a sister, and my brother is here today with his family. Uh, my brother, Wendell, uh, his wife, Tammy, and uh, their son, Zach. And uh, appreciate all they've done for us. Also on the table is uh, Leilani Sage, and Leilani is uh, the daughter of uh, you know, one of my cousins, my first cousins from Honoka, and uh, he uh, was one of the first in our family group that went to college. He went to school at the University of Minnesota, and uh, he encouraged all of us to uh, continue our education. So. Leilani. There's an extra seat at that table, and uh, I kept that seat uh, free for a reason, and that seat belongs to both my, uh, my mom and dad. They were inspirational in uh, my efforts, uh, you know, going to college, my efforts in sports, uh, and my efforts in officiating. Uh, my dad, uh, with uh, very limited education. You know, I think the sixth or seventh grade education was the, you know, the second highest position in the sugar plantation when he, when he uh, had to retire. Uh, 
he was an inspiration in my life. Uh, you know, whatever I did, uh, he was always there. All the games that we participated in, he was always there. He was a decent golfer. Uh, I say decent because uh, I know that on top of the bookcase, there are a lot of trophies and stuff that he won, and uh, I don't think they give those things away anyway. But uh, the thing that uh, I liked the most about him was uh, his uh, ingenuity and his ability to look at something and be able to uh, duplicate that particular uh, item. Uh, because he worked for a sugar plantation, he was given the opportunity once a year to make the trip to Honolulu to attend the Hawaii Sugar Planters Association meeting. And those meetings were held at uh, the Moana Hotel, the Surfrider, the Princess Kailani. And uh, while there for three or four days, he would see things and he would come back home and he would take out paper and pencil and draft whatever uh, he saw. And then he would uh, work on it for a few weeks and stuff. And uh, it's amazing what he produced. He produced uh, uh, an anthurium uh, display. It was a blossom made of wood. And I have that in my house right now. And it's a prized possession of mine. Uh, he built all our you know, living room furniture, including desks and bookcases and uh, uh, dressers. But uh, he was an amazing person. Also, my mother, uh, she was a seamstress. Uh, and uh, she, uh, whenever we needed a new Aloha shirt for Aloha Week or some other project on campus, uh, on, on high school, she was always there. I knew exactly how much material that I needed for an Aloha shirt. I would stop by at the uh, uh, Ruth store in Honoka and purchase the fabric and uh, a spool of thread, and I was able to get a new Aloha shirt probably within the next couple days. Uh, I know that uh, we started working at a young age. I was. Uh, uh, in uh, middle school or intermediate school when I started working uh, on the plantation and uh, my mom would make, uh, make our lunches for the day and she would tell us, you know that lunch is probably costing you more than you're gonna make today. <laughs> and uh, so she said, you better work hard. And that's one of the things that, uh, you know, we had to do because uh, all the supervisors that supervised us, you know, knew, knew our parents and stuff, and we didn't want, we'd get uh, beat up if we uh, didn't perform. Uh, also, a special law to that table right in front here. Uh, I was surprised uh, to see that they had signed up for the banquet. They're uh, my golfing buddies from 50 years ago. Uh, I know early on we used to play golf uh, on every Sunday. Uh, unfortunately, as we got older, we started to have families, and uh, the golf got less and less. And, uh, but they're all close, close friends, and uh, I, uh, I appreciate you guys being here tonight. So thank you. Special thanks to my football and basketball groups that are here. Uh, these guys have been an inspiration for me always uh, supportive and always uh, willing to give me advice that uh, would make me a better official. And obviously special thanks to the selection committee and the board of, director, board of directors for the Hawaii Sports Officials Hall of Fame. I'm just happy and proud to be a member of this 2023 class. Uh, there are three members of the class that are I'd like to mention a few things about. First of all, there's Craig Peterson. Uh, he was an established Western Athletic Conference basketball official when I started officiating high school basketball here in Honolulu. Uh, I remember this trip to the Big Island to do a Balkan basketball game. In those days, it was a two-man crew. We flew over to uh, the Big Island. We walked over to the car rental agency and uh, we walked up, and the person working at the window at the car rental agency knew Craig. And uh, instead of getting a 
small Toyota, we got a brand new Cadillac to drive us a total of probably five or six miles. <laughs> but it was nice of uh, the person to do that. So we got the car, drove to the hotel, parked in the parking structure, went upstairs, registered for the room, go up to a room, took a nap, got up and got ready for the basketball game. The Civic Auditorium was less than a mile away. When we go outside, it is pitch dark. It's getting late, it's pitch dark, and it's pouring rain. So I'm the passenger, Craig's the driver. And uh, Craig opens the door, and that was it. There was a long pause because uh, he didn't uh, have an idea of where the light switch was on the dash panel. He didn't know how to turn on the windshield wipers. I was getting pretty nervous there. I was willing to uh, run upstairs to the desk and get, uh, get a cab. But uh, we finally got the car started, made it to the game on time. To this day, I can't remember who the teams were that played. Obviously, University of Hawaii, Hilo was one of the teams, but uh, I didn't know who the, and who won the game. But anyway, uh, I appreciated all the help that uh, Craig gave me. Another person that I uh, depended on a lot was uh, Glenn Young. Glenn was an established OIA football official when I uh, started officiating football. And he was always available. You know, if I had a question about a rule or a mechanic, I would call Glenn and he would be right there to answer the call, or answer, answer my questions. Yeah, he was... Uh, uh, a fine resource for me as far as basketball goes. However, when he became the basketball coach, I was still doing basketball in the ILH. And uh, I think Glenn forgot about that fact because uh, he yelled at me as, just as much as he yelled or, uh, at the other officials. But uh, he was uh, an outstanding person and I'm glad to be in this uh, class with him. And there's also Don Manel. Uh, in, my in my office, there was a library of rule books and stuff. Most of the rule books were NCAA rule books, but I was looking for uh, softball rule books, and uh, uh, I called Don up and said, you know, hey, do you have an extra rule book around that we could have, you know, a current rule book? And he was more than willing. I know for years he would say, yes, I'll get it to you. Nope. Two days later, it would be sitting on my desk when I showed up to work. So Don, thanks a lot for all those rule books and all those years. I appreciate it. Most of the people in this room, most of the guys that I officiated with, know that uh, I was a football and basketball official. Uh, and I started my officiating career at the University of Hawaii uh, as the assistant intramural sports director. However, uh, about two months ago when I was notified that I was being inducted with this class, I started thinking about, you know, when did I actually start officiating? And I've just got one story to tell. Uh, I grew up on the sugar plantation on the Big Island. Uh, my dad worked for the sugar plantation. We had a house that had a pretty decent sized yard, and that yard was everything. It was a track field, it was a football field, it was a baseball diamond, it was, uh, you know, even a golf course. We had a, a short little putt-putt golf course. But uh, the story that I'm going to tell has to do with track and field. Uh, I've watched enough, enough track meets that I, uh, we needed to mark lanes in the yard. And uh, so I took an old coffee can, went out to the garden, took some dirt, and we marked off four separate lanes on the yard. And that was my grandmother's uh, garden where she was ready to plant something. <laughs> I didn't hear the end of that, but uh, my dad was very, very supportive of uh, what we had done. Anyway, uh, we had, uh, I took a two by four and embedded it in the uh, ground uh, as a takeoff board for long jump. And we couldn't do the long jump because we didn't have a pit to land in, so we used a long jump board as a, uh, standing long jump board. Uh, we had a shot put range where we had about a three or four pound shot put that I picked up at the plantation machine shop. And uh, we also had a high jump standard that we built. You know, I, 
I can't believe that to this day, almost 60 years uh, ago, 70 years ago, uh, I remember using that drill. I still have that drill today in my toolbox here in, in, uh, in Honolulu. And that drill's worked uh, wonders for me. But we built a high jump standard with, and found the longest nail that we could find. And we would uh, move the thing up, uh, you know, depending on the height. Uh, I was fortunate enough uh, to also have uh, a bunch of bamboo that was, my grandmother was using for a garden. And uh, we used that as a crossbar. Uh, and we used to have some, with about six or seven participants, have a pretty good uh, competition. And uh, I remember keeping records. I wish I had kept all the records that we had. I had a clipboard that was attached to a, a post on the uh, pillar in the house. And it had all the records for the, the sprints, the high jump, the standing long jump, the shot put. And uh, I wish I still had that, but I, uh, I don't know what happened to that thing. Uh, we did stuff like that all the time. We didn't have access to a, a real track. We didn't have access to a real football field or a real basketball field. We did so much in our front yard. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a one, one wonderful time. Uh, and that's where I think you know, I got started working, uh, you know, uh, officiating, keeping records of, uh, of events that we participated in. I also went away uh, after I graduated. I was a, uh, an ROTC student when ROTC was mandatory for a college freshman. And uh, I got a, graduated, got a uh, ROTC commission in the Army, and uh, spent time in Europe. My assignment was uh, uh, in Western France. I was the special services officer for all of Western France, all the way from Normandy down to, uh, to the uh, Spanish border. And I often tell people, because they ask, you know, can you explain to me the difference between special services and special forces? I was real clear to them that I was not part of the special forces. I was a special services officer. We provided recreational activities for the uh, troops uh, out, in the, out in the field. Uh, I was there for only about three months, and that was the ideal job for me. I was 23 years old. I had uh, an opportunity to run you know, events uh, for the military in, uh, in France. But uh, right around that time, Charles de Gaulle decided that he wanted the NATO troops out of France, and uh, I moved to a small ammunition storage, a large ammunition storage depot south of, uh, south of France. And uh, we shipped a lot of our munitions to Germany and to England, and I decided you know, to finish out my tour, my year and a half that I had left, by moving to, uh, to England, up around Liverpool, Manchester. Uh, it was, a, it was a great time. I was able to set up you know, basketball courts, basketball leagues for the military. We also competed with uh, softball and uh, tennis tournaments with the uh, people, English people in the community. I just uh, mentioned those things because those are some of the things that uh, you know, most of you don't, uh, don't know about me. Uh, to all the people that have impacted my life uh, you know, in, in officiating and as part of the university community, uh, I uh, want to thank you for your friendship and your encouragement. And most of all, I love all of you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Golfing buddies. He's a good golfer? Is it good? Good, right on. By the way, in keeps you keeping track, that was the second longest speech in the history of the Hall of Fame. I'm not lying. It took, eight, that was an 18 minute speech. I retook the SATs twice during that speech. 
And I love that, and I don't get me wrong, I have immense love for Lloyd, I'm just, I'm just joking around. I love that you're on a table where everyone's a doctor, by the way. Like that's, that's inc they're incredibly talented, that's awesome. 18 minutes, by the way. 18 minutes, it must take you forever to finish a round. <laughs> I'm not lying, I Googled, while you were doing that, I Googled how long it was gonna take for me to drive from here to Kapolei. It said 19 minutes. Oh, by the way, congratulations on your Hall of Fame honor. <laughs> I love you, Lloyd. Lloyd, he's off, everybody. <laughs> we move on to our third inductee, if they're still here. 